Sorry to say that if you don't understand domain one properly, it is difficult for you to clear this exam. So domain one is called as a security risk management, security and risk management. And you can say like that it is a base. You can say it is a base for the entire CISSP. Sorry to say that if you don't understand domain one properly, it is difficult for you to clear this exam because base is very important to establish the other seven domains. Now in CISSP domain one, Okay, the domain start with CIA tried confidentiality, integrity and availability. Now in the exam, you expecting, okay, the definition will be there. No, so they will not give you the perspective about um, what is confidentiality, what is integrity or what is availability. But the question will be around the scenarios. Okay, so let's say example, Peter is a security consultant. He want to encrypt the data and uh, he want to protect against unauthorized disclosure of information. So. You need to know definition, but also you need to know the context, how we can use confidentiality. Like we are using confidentiality in the healthcare because we need to protect PHI data, right? We are using the uh, integrity as a process in a financial process. So we have to see how the integrity is basically used. Like you're working for the cloud computing or you're working for the uh, data center services and all that, you need to prioritize the availability as a control. So you should be very clear with the context of CIA. And in the new slavers, they also added one more important thing, which is called as a authenticity and non-reputation. Like with the help of logs, camera, we can able to track the non-reputation and authenticity. So that's a one thing. Now, second part of this domain is you need to understand how the entire security program works. So let me explain you in this video how the security program works. See, when we start any company, the first step to start the company to understand the vision and mission. That's a one important thing we have. So <coughs> that is the most important part, sorry. So vision and mission is very important. Now, once your vision and mission is clear, then we first can create a strategy. Strategy is a five-year plan. Now to implement the strategy in the organization, we create a program. But when we implementing a program, the first thing we need in the program is policy because policy build the foundation. Okay, let's say example, you want to implement BCP. So we need a BCP policy. You want incident management system, you need an incident management policy. You want chain management, you want a chain management policy. So any kind of a program you are introducing, you need to require the policy first. So first step is strategy. Then we have a policy, policy including the program. And program is a tactical in nature that we implement in the organization. Now, once you have a program, then you basically create SOPs and other things in the systems and then you measure the outcome. So it's very important for you to know this process, okay, strategy, policy and program. Now, moving ahead in the CISSP domain one, there's a lot of topics around the regulation. See, I'm not here to give any kind of a bias view, but I'm just sharing you as CISSP is more like a US based certification. So there are probably some lot of US regulations can be asked in the exam. I'm not disclosing any comfort. I'm not breaching any NDA, but I'm giving you perspective. If you see the exam also, if you see the syllabus also, there's a lot of questions around the regulations. Example, you must be familiar with HIPAA, especially BAA agreement. We have business associate agreement. You don't need to go in detail. Okay. What is included in the BAA or HIPAA and all that that's not required, but yes, you need to have a very good visibility about where we HIPAA is used. like HIPAA is used in a healthcare. What kind of a companies it cover in the HIPAA like healthcare plan, clearing house, okay, provider. And when they outsource data to third party, what kind of an agreement they sign. Another privacy regulation we have used in US is called GLBA, protecting your financial privacy, CCPA, part of a new slavers, California Consumer Privacy Act. Huh, there's a new thing which is called as a SAPSA. You need to know SAPSA. It's a risk driven enterprise security architecture. And they have a context con concept and all that. So you should know all these five, uh, seven elements of SAPSA. It's very important. So because until unless you don't know the SAPSA and all that, it is difficult for you to clear this exam. So you need to have a high level understanding about SAPSA. So just for your information, how to remember as a notice, any topic talking about enterprise level security, security driven function, risk driven function. So we talk about the SAPSA. 
Now, one more thing you need to know about SOX, SOX regulation, which is protecting the account, financial frauds and all that. So you should know what is SOX, how we use SOX in the US, SOX, Sarban Oxley. Okay. And along with that, we have a new content, which is called on POPI, P-O-P-I, which is a data privacy regulation of uh, South Africa and uh, FedRAMP. FedRAMP is a program which is used to assist the cloud provider before we provide the service to the US DOD or federal services and then we have a FISMA. So you should know all these things not in detail but you need to know where it is used. Moving ahead we have a next topic which is called as an intellectual property. It's very important for you to know the type of intellectual property copyright, trademark, trade secret, patent and uh, like we have an economic espionage act which is used to protect in trade secret. Very important, you should know all these things. Then copyright protect for 70 years after death of author, patent protect for 20 years, trademark used to protect the business secrets. And uh, we have a DMCA which is used to protect the copyright. So you should know about this intellectual property. Moving ahead, we also talk about import and export restrictions. You need to understand one thing, when you involved with inter-border data transfer, like example, like I'm sending data from India, to us okay so i should know what is my country restrictions what is the import restrictions and what is their export restrictions so it's very important for us to know that so whenever we're talking about any topic around inter-border data transfer as a CISO, we should know what is the import export restrictions we have and for that enforcement we have a, one international agreement which is called vasenar arrangement 48 countries sign this agreement you should know this along with that itar or ear is one of the uh, US based regulations they have which all about restricting some of the items to the other countries. So you should know on a high level what is Vasenar and what is the EAR and ITAR for the US specific. Then moving ahead we have a next topic which talk about the policy procedures standard guidelines. So you should know like system should be protect with the password is policy password must be eight character that is a standard alphanumeric special is a baseline how to create step by step procedures. One thing you need to understand policy is a foundation for any governance and if you want to verify the governance of any system we basically use the policy so that is something is a part moving ahead the next part in the domain one we talk about the internal threats internal threats so here we're talking about uh, when we hire any candidate we do background check background check is a kind of a preventative control and once the employee join the company what is the next thing we do let's say example the next thing we do is uh, uh, we make him sign nda then he sign the contract then he join the security awareness training program you should know what is the ultimate goal of security awareness program i'm telling you ultimate goal of security awareness program to make the employee aware about the responsibility towards the organization and tomorrow as a CISO, if you want to convince the management uh, that security awareness is effective so there is a good, mat good matrix we use is increase in the incident report and decrease in a security violation like before awareness training people used to report 70 incidents but now people reporting 19 it's a good thing so more people report more visibility we get so we can able to reduce the uh, security violations so it's a very good important matrix and uh, you need to alter your security awareness training according to the audience perspective. So as a CISSP consultant, you should know, as a CISSP candidate, you should know what is the goal of security awareness training. Why we doing a background check? During the exit interview, what is the most important thing? Return its assets, revoke his access. That's the most important part. So you should know all those things. Now, in the organization, we also have one more important thing, which is talking about here. Uh, separation duty so you should know what is the primary purpose of separation duty like it ensure the integrity of the process now here you can see cia enforce with the help of separation duty but there's a possibility even the group of people can work together and commit a fraud what do we call that you should know this because it's a risk called collusion and how you address this collusion with the help of mandatory vacation and job rotation so these are things you should know now moving ahead we have a next topic which is a very important topic called risk management so you should know thoroughly when to use risk assessment how to use risk assessment and what is the primary objective of risk management so for you primary objective of risk management is reduce risk to an acceptable level because we cannot eliminate the risk so in the risk management we have few steps you should know all the steps in detail like risk identification what we do in risk identification like identifying threats identifying assets identifying vulnerabilities 
Now, second step is called as a risk analysis. When we get the visibility about what is the threat, vulnerability we have, like threat agents trigger the threat, exploit the vulnerability, fine. That is a likelihood. What is the impact? So impact we need to calculate. So we have a two way to calculate the impact, qualitative and quantitative. You should know what is the advantage of qualitative. You should know what is the disadvantage of qualitative. You should know advantage of quantitative. You should know disadvantage of qualitative because as a consultant, as a think like a manager, I need to know when to use what. Understood. Like if you have a limited time, we use qualitative risk assessment. We need a accurate data. We go for a quantitative risk. And then especially you need to know the formulas which is used in a quantitative. Sometimes you might get the questions around. I'm not saying that, but I'm just giving example because there is a formulas are available on CISSP. So you should know formula. So that something is very important for you. So you don't need to cal carry any calculator. So here we're talking about the formulas like ALE, SLE, ARO. So these formulas you should be familiar with. Along with that, you should also know the formula of value of control effectiveness like ALE before implementing control minus ALE after implementing control minus cost of control. So you should know the how to create a value of control. So once we implement a risk management, once we implement the control, you have to show the effectiveness of the control. So that's why we use this formula. So you should know this formula and you should know the formula of ALE, SLE, ARO. Now, once you're done with that, you also need to know the different type of risk treatment like acceptance, avoidance, transfer and mitigation. That is also very important for you to understand when to transfer, when to accept, right? When to avoid, when to mitigate. So you should know this. Now, recently what happened is there is a new amendment was there in the syllabus. So you should also know risk appetite, risk tolerance and risk capacity. It's very important for, for you to know this. Okay. One thing for your information is for your knowledge base, risk tolerance is the parameter based on which we take all the decisions. If you want to implement the control, we have to think about risk tolerance. Level of risk we have, we have to take. It can go beyond the appetite. It can go beyond the capacity. So risk appetite and risk capacity is fixed. Risk tolerance is variable in nature. So based on risk tolerance only, we take all the decisions. Okay. Remember that. Then we have a further topic called controls. So you should know what is controls, control type and category. Very, very important. So we have a three type of controls, physical control, technical control, administrative controls. And we have a seven categories by which we implement the controls. So when we're talking about the seven category, we have a deterrent control. We have a directive controls. Uh, we have a preventative controls. We have a compensating controls. We have a corrective controls. We have a recovery controls. So you should know all this control. And there is a dedicated video I made on that. Okay. You don't need to memorize. You need to think, okay, which control we use where. Okay. So you should know that. Now, once you implement the control, you have to do the assessment. So we have a VNPT, small part of VAPT covered in the domain one. You should know what is the first step in the vulnerability assessment. That's called signing the NDA. Then we finalize the scope. Uh, when it comes to pen testing part here, they talk about internal external pen testing, blind and double, double blind pen testing. So you should know. And now in domain one, they also add the new content, which is called threat intel. Very, very important for you to know threat intel is a solution by which we discover the APTs. Okay, remember that. So threat intel is very important. There's a dedicated video I made on threat intel. Please check that. You don't need to go in detail in threat intel, but you should know the process of threat intel and you should know the process of cyber kill chain. Very, very important. Cyber kill chain, you should know the process. Okay, what is the first step? Reconnaissance. What is the last step? So you should know the cyber kill chain process. Again, you just need to know the steps, okay? And we use cyber kill chain to defend the APT, okay? So that's that's a process we use. Along with that, you should know what is threat modeling, when to use threat modeling, like threat modeling we use in a design stage. Especially, you need to remember the stride, S-T-R-I-D-E, stride. Spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, denial of services, elevation of privilege. So you should know stride, okay? That's a very important part. And uh, you should know the stride process, whatever is mentioned in the Cybex, you can check that. One other thing in the stride is we design the entire application, we decompose and then we scope it and then we identify stride in the small, small components. So stride is basically very important. Along with that, we also need to understand the pasta. Pasta is also there, which is very, very important in the, in the exam. That is another important topic we have. Then uh, the new topic which is covered in the section here is which is called as a BCP business continuity planning. So BCP is a very important topic. Exactly. So when it comes to BCP in the BCP, the first step is you create a policy. 
you know, if you want to implement any kind of a contingency system, the first step is create a policy. We just discussed that. And then we do BIA. BIA help you to prioritize what is important, what is not. Remember one thing, any changes happen in the BCP, BIA, we have to perform. If any changes happen in the business, you already create a BCP plan, change in the business, you need to revalidate again. Again, we do BIA. So BIA help you to prioritize what is important, what is not. There's a dedicated video I made on BCP. Okay, just check that 11 minutes video. That is sufficient. Along with that, I also have a dedicated coffee shot. Now in the BIA, we talk about the MTD, RT or RPO. Okay, so you should know who determine MTD. What is MTD? Based on MTD, we define the RTO. What is the purpose of RPO? Like example, maximum tolerable downtime is MTD. The time it takes to restore the services, RTO. Acceptable data loss is RPO. So whenever we talk about backup, 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 RPO, when we're talking about accept acceptable downtime, MTD. So MTD, RPO always determined by the business owner. So you should know this. So first step is building a policy. The second step is we do BIA. The third step is basically we submit all this recovery priority and recovery strategy to the board for an approval. They approve that, we create a DR plan, then we test the plan and then we implement the plan. So you should know thoroughly what is BIA, when to use BIA and how to use BIA. Okay, so you should know all these things. So this is the summary of the entire domain one. Do let me know how do you find this video and do let me know shall I make more videos on CISSP of the rest of the domain. And one more important thing, the summary is that you should be good with risk management, you should be good with BCP, threat modeling, cyber kill chain, and more important is security program. Do let me know how do you find this video in the comment box. And uh, if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. Thank you so much for watching this video. Good day. Bye.